Hey guys, so in this lesson, um, it's very important to look at tooling and look at what the component is, and especially what are decorators. Angular uses a lot of decorators, and it's important to understand the fundamentals of it so you can move forward easier and build components. So decorators are functions that are metadata to your class, your class members. It's a concept taken from TypeScript, and Angular uses to define the modules, the components, the directives, and the pipes. So Angular's built-in decorators you would normally see is at component, at directive, at pipe, at injectable. Now we will go in very deep and look at each one of them, but before we look at the decorators and components, let's talk about the tooling we use. So we have an Angular CLI to run Angular commands. We have Node that has npm to run npm commands. And what we do with Angular CLI is actually we write the command to generate the components, the directives, the pipes. It's a command to help programmers, instead of building each one manually by hand, you can type in a command and it will generate you a component that you can use. It's a very simple tool. So let's dive into the tooling so we can understand more about decorators and components. So we have our Angular application here running. Our product is called Sembler, as we mentioned before. Now, this is a packagation file that you see in your root folder, and it has the scripts here to run the commands. Let's go ahead and open the terminal again. If you have your terminal open, that's great. Just do npm run start. So great, we've got our component built, and we can look at the URL, if you remember, it's localhost. 4,200, and we have an app are running, right? Now, this is the first Angular app component that we have, that we mentioned before. But today is not about the app component, I'm talking about overall components in Angular. So let's refresh, or let's create a new, let's create a new terminal, and you can add that by clicking a plus sign here. And what you need to do is you run some command lines. Now, in Angular, you can run a command line, as mentioned before, to create your components. So there's ng to that's the ng is the CLI command line, and then you can g for generate, or you can write the full name generate. I prefer shortcut g. C is for the component. Now that would generate a header component. Let's generate a new one, which is ng d for directive, and you can write a directive that's a header highlight highlight. Next one that you will see normally is is ngg and s for service so you would have a let's say a user service the following you would have is the following you would have a module which you can create a module by N ngg to generate again m for module and you can create it as a user so great now we have generated these several types of components Let's look deeply at differences and understand what's different between them. So if I go into source, app folder, you would see my header user, you will see my directive, and my user service. And I also, in the user folder, I'll have my user module, which is the a module that we generated. Let's start with the basics. Let's look at what actually a component does. So a header component. So as I mentioned before, decorator is a function that adds metadata to a class, class member. Now, when I mention a decorator, I'm referring to this at symbol. These are the decorators, and that defines the type of component. This is a component class, where you define the metadata. And when I'm referring to metadata, I'm referring to the selector, template URL, style URL. So these, the, this metadata gets passed into the component decorator and understands what to do with the class. You understand that there's a template URL, which is the HTML of your component. There's a CSS file, which is rendering the CSS for that component. And there's a selector. The selector is used when you want to render or you want to place it into another component. So, the, so this above is called a class decorator. Now, it's for a component. Let's look more into a module. So Angular also uses an ng module. This decorator defines a module. Again, inside a module, you have a metadata. And this metadata is a little bit different. You have a declaration, import. Also, what you don't have here, which is normally shown, is export. You will have providers. And then inside of each of them, you define things. And what are these things? So in declaration, you define your components. You can declare a component and you export a component. And that means that other, other modules, so what happens is ng module, let's say it's an isolated object. And you can have another module on the side. You can actually inject one module into another module. And that way you can pull in all the component functionalities into the other module. Now, the module on the left-hand side 
can't access the components until you've exported the components. So I allowed it, so I allowed it to actually use it inside of the module. Now, import is where this module, let's say both of them can have imports, and the imports actually define external libraries. So in this module, let's say module A, you actually would import module B into it. And module B may have other imports, like let's say Angular Material, any other external li library that you need to use for that module to be, to be able to be functional properly. Providers is where you find services. So services are things that you use, I will go into deep in a second, but let's say here you define services. So as we're talking about services, let's move on to a service. We've created a user service here. Again, the user service has a thing here called an injectable directive, an injectable decorator. An injectable direct decorator is basically a dependency injection. That way Angular understands that they need to take this service and inject it into whatever you are referring to. Now you can, now you can take this user service and you can define it by taking user service and you can define it inside your user module by going here in providers, pasting it in, selecting it and importing it. Now you've imported your user module into your, you know, now you've imported your user service into your user module. What's next? Let's go and have a look. I will remove this because what happens is when you generate, so when you generate your services, normally it searches for the closest module that you can and it what's automatically imported into that module. So if we look into the app module, we'll normally see here our header component and our header highlight directive already imported into the app component. Now I would like to remove it for a second, just so we can talk about it more in depth and then go and understand, and then understand more about the dependency injection. So I'll leave the app module clean. I'll close the app module, I'll close the user module. Now next thing is we're talking about directives. Now a directive decorator is what changes the appearance or behavior of a DOM element. It means when you include it into your HTML, it changes the DOM. It can, be, it can change the behavior of how the HTML gets rendered or how the user interacts with it. So you can listen into the DOM. If you don't know what DOM is, DOM is document object model. In simple, in simple human words, it's basically the HTML. So if you inspect element here, anything that you see in your element, this is the DOM. DOM consists of your HTML tags. It's what you render, the view, render visually onto your screen. Back to the directives. So great, we understood an attribute directive and we understand a component class, which is called a component decorator. But, but there's another thing that's called, but there's another thing called structural directives. Now structural directives comes in Angular with a module. Now that module is used, which you can see here, an app module It's called browser module, or when you create a module inside of your component, it also defines, if you go into user module, you will, see it under, you will see it underneath common module. Now common module has all these structural directives. If we hover over it, we will see that our IDE tells us that it's directives and pipes such as ng if, ng for, of, decimal pipe, and so on. So what it means, so when you have an HTML, in JavaScript, you normally loop through the code, and then you inject your HTML into your inject, you insert your HTML in the DOM. So ng4 will allow you, for example, the way, well, let's first, the way you define a structural directive is with an asterisk. So in your HTML, you can write, let's go and write some so you can see an example. In our header components, so let me import right now our header component into back into our app module so we can use it. So where I don't import, I declare a component, be precise. I declared the header component, and that allows me to use that component in my app module, because my app module is my first module that gets booted up by Angular when it starts running. I take the app header, and what I do is, I can now go in my app component, remove this for a second, paste it in. So on selector is the same as HTML, divs you have to open a tag and you have to close an element tag for it to be rendered except for inputs where you don't have you just have a slash at the end and it's beautifully working without that so an app header if i go now back to my page header works so let's look at these structural directives so structural directives so let's say we have a list a loop if you remember in you log well, if you remember in html the basic of html you have a ul list so you have a ul element 
and then li that defines the list elements. So basically a list element. So let's create an ul. And then let's create an li element, which is basically the list item. So let's say we have a home. About us. And contact us. Now these are oh, oh by accident called apologies. So we have now three elements. If you go to the page, we see them here. But we can loop through them. So if you look at HTML, we can see a URL and LI. Now, how do I loop through them? What I do is on the LI, so on the so on the element that you want to loop through, what you do is an asterisk. You do an ng4, ng4, ng small, and then you have camel case, so upper camel case, sudden small going upwards. And then you write let, meaning, so there's lets and cons which I'll explain in another lesson. So let every item of an array, so you're looking through an array. Let's say you have a home, as we mentioned before, then we have an about us, string, inside an array, and a contact us. And what I will do here is, I will output, I'll delete these items. Now, what are these curly braces that I'm using? Well, you know, like you can hear, you can hear a lot of expression called mustache, um, just the mustache framework. Um, these, you basically, that's how you render your item in Angular in the front end. So item, you render every item of this array, and you loop it through. You have the same effect here, it'll render it, and you can see now what it does is it appended an ng content. And ng content is basically how Angular uh, links up with the DOM and it renders each part. Now I'll go more about that in other videos, but for now, you can see how it renders. And you can see here binding. So it's binding for every element for ng4, home, about, us, and contact us. And you have a rendered list. So these are structural directives. So let's go back to what we just spoke about. We have components, which you have decorative uh, component. You have a, dire a directive component, which is an attribute directive. And you have and you have a structural directives, which are ng-if, ng-4, and so on. I didn't mention about ng-if. Let's look at ng-if. So ng-if is you can set a variable. So let's say ng-if. If this variable is true, render it. If not, don't. So I can put a false. And it won't render it because the variable is false. If I put true, it will render it. So you can see that how Angular, how Angular simplifies things for you easier, so you don't have to, in Manila JavaScript, there's too much logic. Here, Angular tries to lift up all the difficulties and trying to help you out. So to summarize what we mentioned, we mentioned that components are special kind of directors having their own template. The at component decorative identifies the class immediately below as it's a component class. So if we look back at our, if you look back at our header component TS file, TypeScript file, you will see a selector, you see a HTML reference, and you see a style URL. Now you can reference it instead of template URL, so you can change the metadata, and the and the component has different types of metadata. But this metadata, for example, you can do template, and what you can do is you can write a div here. Saying hello, hello, like this, and what it will do is now render this string. So it doesn't, so it knows it doesn't have to search for a template URL. You just can render it template, right, like this. Now the thing is, you can't go on more in lines. You can't go in multiple lines, as it will break. If I just do like this, it will break. It won't understand what to do. But the good thing about ES6, you have a back tick. And backticks allow you to write multiple lines like this and render it. Isn't that amazing? These are good when you're creating small components. When you want to see your HTML and your TypeScript, your logic into one file, you don't need actually an HTML file. But if you're creating components um, like headers and footers that are not reusable components, you would like to separate them. You like to have an HTML separate from your TypeScript. Why? It's because you have a linter. You can have a linter for HTML, you can have a linter for TypeScript. React puts everything into one file. Hence, the linter is a bit difficult.
Now, me personally, I love linters. Why? It just simplifies your life. It makes you sure that your code's in a good stage. That's why you have unit tests. That's why we have linters. It all improves and helps us. So one more thing that I want to mention, going back to our theory, is we have class decorators I mentioned before, which we spoke about just a second ago. And we have class field decorators, which we have not yet mentioned. So class field decorators are basically decorators like at input that is used for receiving data from the parent to child and at output used for passing data from child to parent. And what you do is you can pass in a data like a string, an object from parent to child using an input. But when you're doing an output, you're actually passing an event and via events, you're catching the data and then you're manipulating the data. Let's have a look at an example of what I was referring to. So let's say in that header, instead of reverting back to the template URL, because I love that URL, like separating my concerns. Let's say in that header, instead of passing the array here, we could have a variable, right? We can have a variable of menu list. And we can define that very manual list here in, a, in our class as a public item menu list. Type it, make sure you type it properly. It's an array. And don't use type any. That does not work. We are right now in pro level, so let's not be juniors and create any. Any is great, but then you have a headache fixing any. So this is just a variable menu list, and it will still render it beautifully. But now I want the menu list to be passed in from the parent. I want my app component to tell me what the menu is. So I can remove this, still click it close. So it's defined, it's just undefined. And then from app components, I can define the menu list here or menu, let's say, yeah, user menu, which will be an array, keeping it still typed, which will be a string, or equal to my, oh, you know, close it like that. Equal, equal to my array. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my user menu, go in my app component HTML, go in my header, and assign it via props, user menu, and I need to select the prop, the header is here. So the prop is menu list. So I assign it here. So I'm via, menu, via props, or we have to call angular inputs, I'm passing the data. You see a lot of it in React as well, you pass it through props. So we have perhaps I'm signing it. Now the header, what I have to do is I have to change this into a decorative, it's just input. And what I'm telling you that input decorative I've imported as I need to use the decorative. Menu list item should expect data from the parent and when it passes in, please render it. So now if I go back a component and I change this from home to dashboard, I can see now the parent data, let's look at our HTML. Our parent data gets passed into the app header from the parent, as you can see, ng reflect menu list, and it's getting this data and it's rendering through to the URL. So that way you can pass data from the parent to the child. Again, this is, again, this is what you call inputs and output decorators. Inputs passing data from the parent to the child, output passing events from the child to the parent. Let's look at how we pass data to the parent. Let's say we have in our app, in our header component, a button. Let's have a standard button, open sesame. And when you click on open sesame, so this is a button, it will render it. I click on it, nothing happens. Now the way you can do click events in Angular, you just right click. And then you assign it to a method. So a method would be open. You define a method in your TypeScript file. And you can say clicked. So console log right now. If I go into console, refresh this, click open sesame. Whoops. Open is not function. Did I not save my file? Open. Header. Header. I thought I saved it. Interesting. Ah, maybe it didn't refresh. So I click on it, and now it's tracking or listening to the event. No, not listening. You're basically receiving the, you're basically triggering the function called open. So you're triggering the open method, which is console login out. So now I'm going to pass it to the parent. Well, passing it to the parent, I need an output. Now, output is going to be what's going to be the, uh, it's going to, output is going to be what you're going to be passing it through to the parent. We can have user clicked, user clicked, which will be an event emitter any, and what you're going to assign it to a new event 
a meter like this. Now I told you it's not always support any as your types. Let's import them. So see, automatically IDE imports it from protector, pro protractor. Oh, in my language. So what you want to do is import it. You want to import it for Angular Core. Let me show you the Angular Core. It imports it beautifully. Now let's about when we pass the data from here. Let's say passing some data. Let's go. What can they can open system be? Please, please open the window. So there will be a string we're passing when you click on the open method. So that will be, let's say it's an act. Let's say it's a data here, which will be a string, which is the open please window. And this data, which is here as well, we need, we need to specify that's a string, because we now know what type of data we're going to be passed. And the way we pass data to the parent is by saying this user clicked emit the so once you have signed a new emitter, it has an emit method. Emit method expects a value. If you hover on top of it, it expects a value which is a string. And let's say, because this is a defined string, you define data, and now we are emitting the data to the parent. Now this is an event. So user clicked. How do we catch it from the parent? Well, catching it is by defining like this. In the curly braces, the curly braces in the brackets, not in brackets. In the in the curly, well, you understood. You define it that way. So basically, I forgot the name. But. So in these braces, brackets, curly braces. I figure out. So curly braces. So through cur so through curly braces, you define the so through curly braces, you define the output, which is your user click, and then you assign it to a method. So that method could be trigger trigger open it can be anything you can call it I'm just right now calling trigger open I'm running out of ideas of the names so there you can pass in you're passing in the event right and then in trigger open you go in your touch your file you catch the event which is the um, it can be anything the item or you can be the ev event for f for short and then it's a string, you know it's a string you're passing through back, and you can console log out. The event is F. So now if I click on open sesame, my parent app component TS file is catching it. Amazing. So we have understood an output and we have understood an input. Great guys, I'm gonna stop there. We have understood the commands we're using, the tools that we're using, we understood what well, our decorators, what well, our components. What type of components actually we have in our Angular application? Where did Angular, where did Angular framework actually got the decorators from? I hope I explained it as clear as possible and you guys understood the full concept, where it comes from, how it works, how can you generate it. And I hope to see you in the next lecture. See you guys.